The next portion of our program speaks directly to the value of veteran services. To introduce our next guest, I'd like I now like to bring to the stage the Director of Survivor Services for the Travis Mannion Foundation, Amy Looney. Hi, good evening. Thank you, JR. We are privileged to have with us this evening the Secretary of Veteran Affairs, Robert McDonald. When Ryan and I had the honor of meeting Secretary McDonald last month, it was clear that he is incredibly passionate and driven about helping support veterans in our military community. Secretary McDonald is a 1975 graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. <laughs> and an alumnus of the University of Utah, where he earned an MBA. An Army veteran and both Airborne and Ranger qualified, he served with the 82nd Airborne Division. Upon leaving military service, Captain McDonald was awarded the Meritorious Service Medal. In 1980, Mr. McDonald joined Procter & Gamble, a Fortune 50 company and he rose through the ranks to become Chief Executive Officer and President. He retired in June of 2013. Nominated by President Obama as the eighth Secretary of Veteran Affairs on June 30th, he was confirmed by the United States Senate on July 29th, 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, Secretary of Veteran Affairs, Robert McDonald. Welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you, Amy, for the very kind introduction. When uh, Amy and Ryan came to visit me in Washington, D.C., I, I really said I had to be here tonight um, because I wanted to be here to underscore the importance of what the Travis Mannion Foundation does. Uh, when Tom had written the original book, Brothers Forever, uh, I bought it the day it was published, and it really spoke to me. It spoke to me about the relationship of two young men, the relationships that get forged at places like Annapolis or West Point. And it spoke to me also, it speaks to me today, because the Deputy Secretary of the Veterans Affairs Department is my classmate, Sloan Gibson. And he and I lived next to each other our senior year at West Point. We've known each other for over 40 years. And just like in the military, there's nothing like doing something you love with someone you love. And it takes that mission, that purpose, to an even higher level. I think it's terrific today to be in the city of brotherly love and to see all the beautiful holiday decorations throughout the city and in this glorious building. But it reminds me that this is a season of gifts. It's the right time of year for that. A lot of giving this season, and in a sense, no gift more valuable, no treasure more pre precious than purpose to our lives. I've believed in the sense of purpose for many years, whether it was when I was a Boy Scout or when I went to West Point to try to free people who were living in societies that didn't have free, or when I joined the Procter & Gamble company to try to improve lives with our products, or when I was asked to help lead the VA. Purpose is important. To me, there's nothing like living a life of purpose, and that's what the Travis Mannion Foundation's all about. Wouldn't it be a tragedy if young people today led their life by simply meandering through life without direction rather than living life of purpose. So I thought that tonight was an unusually extraordinary opportunity for all of us to recommit ourselves to purpose in our lives. Imagine 
if any one of us was near death here in Philadelphia, we're in a hospital here in Philadelphia, and someone we love says to us, did you accomplish what you set out to accomplish in your life? What would be your answer? Would it be, gee, I don't know, I never really had a purpose? Would it be, well, um, gosh, I, I got close, but I really didn't accomplish my purpose? When I've spoken to individuals at universities and young people around the world, I always say the most important thing you can do is to decide what your purpose in life is. And this is what the Travis Mannion Foundation does, and it's the reason I'm so thrilled to be here tonight. It's about caring for those who have borne the battle, as Abraham Lincoln said in his second inaugural address. It's about giving veterans and the families of those who've fallen a renewed sense of purpose. It's about helping youngsters in local communities find purpose through service and through leadership. Individually, we can make a tremendous difference. But collectively, think of what we can accomplish. When I think about these things, I go back to my favorite story, the book I enjoy the most. It's the story of Don Quixote. It's Man of La Mancha, written by Miguel de Cervantes, one of the first novels ever written. And for those of you unfamiliar with it, it was made famous in a musical called Man of La Mancha. It's about a man who's mad. He wears a hat that is actually a bowl that people get their hair cut and shaved in. He carries a, a lance, which is really not a lance. He rides a horse that's really not a horse. And he spends his life doing gallant deeds and treating people with chivalry. In a bar, he runs into a barmaid, a prostitute named Eldonza, but he treats her like a princess, and she goes on the journey with him. He has a squire named Sancho who also goes on that journey with him. Both are intrigued by this old man who's mad. And as the story goes, the man goes out through his life, and he does good deeds for others. That is his purpose. At the end of the show, at the end of the musical, Don Quixote dies. And Sancho and Eldonza are standing next to Don Quixote. And Sancho turns to Eldonza, who Don Quixote called Dulcinea because that's the name of a princess. And he said, Eldonza, Don Quixote is dead. And Eldonza turns back and says, my name is Dulcinea. And I think that's the challenge. Can we make the difference in the life of at least one person? And through that, have them make the difference in the life of another? And as this cascades throughout our society, we make a difference in the life of everyone. As Miguel, Miguel de Cervantes wrote after he wrote this book, he said, who's mad? Is it the person who sees the world the way that it is? Or is it the person who sees the world the way that it should be? I think what the Travis Mannion Foundation charges us to do is to see the world the way that it should be and to make that world the way it should be. Thank you very much.